This episode is sponsored by Honey Badger. In addition to Honey Badger's great error monitoring service, they also have an uptime monitoring for web developers. And Honey Badger has recently shipped an update that allows for public status pages that can help communicate outages to your customers. In addition to your uptime monitoring, Honey Badger now monitors your SSL certificates. And Honey Badger now has actions which will allow you to do bulk updates to all your errors, or you can set defaults for incoming errors. Back in episode 334, we created a shopping cart with Turbo. And this shopping cart was interactive, where we could do different kinds of searches, and then we get add items to a cart. Using Turbo, it'll automatically update the number of items that we have in our cart. And if we go to checkout, you'll see that it has a summary page, and we can update the quantity of items, or we can remove them altogether, and then we can proceed on with the checkout. And that's where episode 334 stopped. So in this episode, we're going to complete the checkout session. But before we check out, let's go ahead and add another item. So then when we go to checkout, it'll take us over to Stripe. We'll see the list of items and the total. And then we can fill out our credit card information and then click pay. That'll then take us back to our application once it's processed. And it'll say thank you for your purchase. If we go back to our cart, you'll see that the checkout is empty now. Whereas if we just have one item, we go to checkout. And if we decided that we want to return back to our cart, we can go back and we still have that one item in there. So it's not until we get a completed checkout, will it empty out the cart. And once it processed using the webhooks, we'll then be able to say that this payment has been completed. So if you haven't watched episode 334 yet, I highly recommend watching that one before moving on with this one as it will cover some important information. And so for this episode, we're going to download the original source code and we're going to pick it right up from there. So once you download the source, we'll extract it and then we'll open up our editor within the project folder. 